So here was a question. We will try to do the answer or give an answer. Um, if you've watched me do ranked streams, you're going to find that a lot of this is actually pretty similar. But we can talk about some basic stuff. Right. All right, so in this instance, um, <clears throat> you've got, this is called the contested cap, or this is colloquially known as the contested cap. Contexted, cute. So we'll put this over on this side, and then we'll have um, the safe cap. And I guess we can do similar safe cap here. <clears throat> Team coach has been talking about spotting over damage, DD control, and playing cons conservation. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it really comes down to... All right, so basic tactics. First things first, what are clan battles? Um, the question is, can you take some time to talk about clan battle CV tactics that are different than randoms? I'm being tagged to play Hikuryu or Midway in my entry level clan. First things first, you need your safe cap. They need their safe cap. It is expected that you will take your safe cap. So one of the first things that a carrier can do is run across the map and potentially spot the enemy team, maybe by dropping a fighter somewhere in the mid or maybe dropping a fighter in the rear to try to force some spotting on that cap. But when it comes to ranked, when it comes to clan battles, points, uh, points matter. In an entry level clan, you're probably gonna get a whole bunch of kills back and forth, big brawly bullshit fights and stuff. But you don't have to get a kill to win the battle. You have to hold the space to win a battle. So if you get your cap five seconds faster, you can be positive five points if you get it five seconds faster than they do. So theoretically, your CV is gonna come over, get some spotting information, and then come over here and go for resets over and over, or at least once. So what this means is um, when, let's see if we can go back a bit. When your cap is that full, whatever, because you're taking the cap, and they've started taking, they get to their cap slightly faster than you, they're here. This is a five point difference in their favor. If these guys are up five points, then you have to kill one of them, or you have to take a second cap and hold it for at least six points worth of time. Otherwise you lose. Congratulations, you lose. So having even this small little benefit forces the enemy team to have to make a move, to have to come in and do a thing. So first off, expect that the first minute of the game is going to be scouting and cap contest. That's pretty terrible, but at least I said it so you can read it in context. Because if you come over here and you're able to strike, strike the DD, even if you don't do very much damage, you just get resets, suddenly you knock out you know, half or whatever of this cap control, you guys are now up by 0.6, or like by point, or six points. The enemy CV will try to do the same. You try to reset them, they try to reset you. Uh, if that means that you send a CV, or send a destroyer that has a smoke, use a smoke. If that means that you Send two ships, send two ships. Do whatever you're gonna do, but use the combined power of your carrier to reduce their points while using your team to increase yours. Once you've, well, once this part has solidified out, ugh, whatever, we'll just do this the old fashioned way. Um, cool. So once you've done this to where, um, Y'all, like, they've taken a cap, you've taken a cap. You've started your, uh, you've started your thing. So now we're going to think about pacing. What are you guys going to do? So you have, you might have, potentially, there's two ways to take from here. There's a safe to safe push, 
in which case you're going to claim this and then you're going to claim that which means you're going to have to have more resources on the safe side than they have on the contested side or there's an attrition fight where you're going to be bunkered up they're going to be bunkered up and you guys are going back and forth trying to take the cap take the cap take the cap take the cap back and forth back and forth whatever your cv choice is going to matter for this the hakuryu uh, does not excel against open water targets, but it's very fast. So if you're going to run the Hakuryu, you might run the Hakuryu in a way that's going to assist a safe-to-safe -safe push. Now, just because it's a safe-to-safe -safe push, you might have two, two surface ships, they might have two surface ships. Let's change that to a more noticeable color. You might have two surface ships, they might have two surface ships. Well, if you dedicate your Hakuryu over here, if you can start torpedo bombering, wham, come in, wham, come in, wham. You start dealing a bunch of damage, these guys start to bail, which means your team starts to push forward and you start to threaten this back cap. When you threaten the back cap, you may have no movement on this side, but the enemy will be forced to pull resources to try to help hold their cap, which means your resources can start to move and threaten the contested as well. So being able to take advanced position while using CV support to advance your position can result in a lot of pressure. And you want to move your pressure line forward so that the enemy is now having to deal with multiple threats. If you're playing a midway, I guess I could just leave this up. If you're playing the midway, midway is going to be more about contested side. Why? Because the torpedoes are obnoxiously sluggish. So if you're trying to deal with these two ships, they can just move and then they don't eat your torps because the torps are really slow. They're really sluggish. They're hard to aim. You can outmaneuver the torps. That being said, you could torp in a way that makes the ship turn and then maybe your ship deals some good damage to it when it shows broadside or something. That's possible, but the midway's sluggish in that respect. Good for hitting battleships, not so good for dealing with cruisers. In clan battles, there are a lot of cruisers. The midway is going to be more against bunkered up fixed positions. So if you have an enemy that they're back here and they've got some approach angles, you can come into torp and dislodge them, move them forward, move them back. If this guy is holding radar over the cap, you can torp him to move him back. Just torp on the nose, he'll reverse to get the fuck out of the way of torps. Damage is cool, but if you claim the position that allows you to come in and threaten the cap because he can't radar it, you can use that. The heavy throw weight of a midway is going to be able to dislodge bunkered up targets. The, the high health of the midway is going to allow you to get to the targets in the first place. And bombing is going to be able to dislodge this stuff. What about destroyers? Well, if they've got a DD here and you've got a DD here, well, theoretically, yeah, you could send your planes over and you could spot the destroyer. But all they really have to do is just have some ships even mildly close to this position and they're just gonna rain fucking murder on your planes while you're spotting this shit. If the enemy DD just backs up a little, your planes get vaporized and then they come back and do the shit. You should not design a strategy that does not have radar or the ability to detect a destroyer because if your planes get murdered, you no longer have the ability to detect a destroyer because you brought a comp that doesn't allow you to do it. Um, you need to design something that you've got multiple methods for dealing with, say, the contested cap. You might want a 12 kilometer radar that is able to screen this so you get some shells in. You might want a Venezia that's got a threatening angle so that when you do spot this bitch, there's some real nasty fucking sap shells coming in because you're going to have a short window of time where you can spot this before it backs the fuck up, all the flak opens up, and you have to leave. Um, you don't get to linger on this stuff. With a Hakuryu or a Midway, you're just you're not going to have enough health to just sit on top of the DD if the destroyer is anywhere close to using other friendly ships. Also, the enemy CV can simply drop a fighter. And then congratulations, you don't get to hover the DD anymore. You'll take extreme plane loss and you'll take AA. You won't be there very long. Having the radar, having a DD that can, that can spot outspot maybe with a shimikaze or a gearing or something they this guy can spot that without being spotted in return you get to shoot the dd so planning is important you're going to want detection you're going to want spotting uh that can that can cause issues you're going to want the ability to really strike in in those windows of time where you can make it happen 
But you also have to decide, what are you going to threaten? Are you going to threaten the safe to safe cap push? Or are you going to threaten the contested area? If you're going for the safe to safe, Hakuryu is fine. You can use the Torps, which are sluggish, but are accurate enough to fuck over some cruisers to allow you guys to push. And the Hakuryu is fast enough that you could run over and maybe try to help make a play here because the planes are actually pretty zippy. If you're running the midway, you're probably parking the midway bore in this area to have bow in shots in case of uh, in case they're going to take pot shots at you. You'll have your bow in deck, and um, you could run some stuff over to try to help with the safe to safe. But more likely, if you're committing the midway to your contested, you are not committing your midway to your safe, which means these two are actually looking to kite and just hold this position. So where your CV is pushing its influence is generally indicative of where you are trying to push your team's influence. Are you trying to make plays on the contested? Are you trying to make plays on the safe to safe push? Occur you safe to safe midway contested. Obviously there's some variance to that, but that's just some entry level basic stuff.